Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well, right? Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's looking at the market uh, the way of reality instead of fantasy. Again, trade the market uh, that we have, not the market uh, that we want. Uh, if you are enjoying the content, if you are brand new, or if you're just a faithful, uh, loyal follower, number one, I want to say thank you. Thank you for spending a couple minutes with us. Uh, all I ask is if you could get be so kind, uh, click a like, on the video, help us out, share, subscribe, uh, and all that good stuff. So we talked about uh, last night uh, on the video, we put in our uh, first green candle close, right? All you got to do is just literally watch last night's video. Uh, we put in last night our first daily close, two in the last three weeks that were higher closes than opens. Uh, we also talked about last night that the last thing you want to do, right? The last thing you want to do is pay the gap up, right? Don't pay the gap up. You guys remember last night's video? Don't pay the gap up. You can be buying stocks in the supply. Wait till after 10 o'clock because there's a high probability if you are buying a gap up in a sell cycle environment, well, what's going to happen, right? Kind of review. Well, you're going to be buying stock into supply. That's exactly what happened today, okay? I'm not sure it could have played out any better, right? Um, last night, you had Japan rebounding, closed up about 10%. You have a lot of asset classes rebounding. Uh, last night, the, the NASDAQ futures were surging, like really, really surging. When you woke up this morning, they were up about 120 points. You're like, uh-oh, okay? But they got stronger, right? They got stronger on uh, mid-morning and right at the open. This is the first thing I always talk about, uh, especially at Morning Strategy, I always say, hey, look, especially in a sell cycle, if you are buying stocks at the open in a sell cycle into supply on a gap, there's a good chance in the first 30 minutes or so you're going to be underwater. Not only was that play exactly what we talked about, but it's exactly what we talked about in last night's video. They took the market red, right? That's what we wanted. They took the market red. They trapped shorts green to red. And once they started taking above, started trapping shorts, going red to green, and started taking above the pre-days ranges, the previous days ranges, we actually had a nice rally, right? We did have a nice rally on the surface. NASDAQ at one point was up about 400 points, a little less than 400 points. That's kind of what we talked about in last night's video. There should be a four or 500-point rally at some point this week. We talked about the, the possibility of getting back to this 445 level uh, into uh, declining supply. That happened as well. But the most concerning part about everything that we've seen today, it felt like even though things played out and they weren't smooth, by no stretch of the imagination were they smooth, you had some really nice moves, right? Uh, Microsoft, really nice move, got above the 401 level, went all the way up to almost 406. Uh, NVIDIA, nice move here. You know, we talked about all these names for potential uh, previous days range reclaim. NVIDIA did exactly the same thing, 10340s uh, into the 107s. Again, we talked about this uh, last night as well. But the most important part, guys, the most important part is kind of where we finish. And that's the name of the game. If you look at the NASDAQ 100, what happened to it? Okay. Even though, again, we put in a second consecutive day of a green closing candle, it felt like watching a, you know, like when you're dating and you're in your early 20s, this hot butt naked angry sex, right? You're throwing each other into the wall, you have scratches everywhere, not for children. You guys leave the room, right? All you 12 year olds are stock traders, not for you. And then you have the old couple, what's married for 60 years, they have nothing left to talk about. And once every like five, six years, they brush up against each other. And the next thing you know, they'll have the most boring ass missionary sex, assuming he can get it up for the next 32 seconds. That's what felt like today's rally, right? It felt like butt 
old, smelly people, no offense, that were married for 60 years. They have nothing to talk about anymore. But that once every decade encounter, this was it. That's what it felt like today's rally. And the more you, you look at a lot of the names, how they're closing this evening, you're kind of getting the same feel in your belt. Uh, this evening, you had a lot of stocks. Uh, you had a lot of stocks. They're reporting, uh, you know, let me talk about the big ones. Uh, Instacart, you know, nice quarter. Nice quarter popped up about. Nice quarter. Uh, you had Amgen coming out with earnings. Today. Again, there was nothing major today. Yet, oh, we'll get to that in a second. Yet, Amgen coming out with earnings, uh, Airbnb uh, getting beat down a little bit. But the one that people were looking at today and say, well, maybe this one can sell, save the market. Hate to break it to you. If Apple didn't save the market, Microsoft didn't save the market, AMD didn't save the market, Tesla and this one and that one, SMCI is a little bit of a stretch. But nevertheless, they did come out with earnings. So SMCI came out with earnings and... The first headline was that, well, they announced a 10 for 1 stock split and people started chasing that 10 for 1 stock split and the stock went up like 125 points. The problem is where they missed that next little headline that said, yeah, there's a 10 for 1 stock split, but we kind of missed on earnings, kind of a big earnings per share miss. And Although you can get away with that in a really aggressive, rabid bull market chasing the headline, in this type of environment, just like what Apple did, right? When Apple, you know, kind of beat their number a little bit, you can't just beat your number a little bit, right? You can't just beat the top and bottom line a little bit. You got to come out in this type of environment with godlike, godlike earnings. And the problem was people really didn't read the fine print. They had an earnings, uh, they had a big EPS miss, and once 125 point uh, rally, the stock currently is down about 60 points uh, after hours. As you could imagine, uh, everything else, you know, everything else that spiked up with SMCI is coming back in. Here is the issue going into the next couple of days of the tape. And this is kind of a where bulls and bears might have a little bit of an issue. As you can see here, as you can see here, based on what we're looking at, that we did get rejected back uh, from the 65-day supply, right? So now we're kind of in the middle of the range. The problem is we're not at the, we're not even close to today's range on the close. We're definitely not close to yesterday's lows uh, on the close. We are right in the middle. So you might find yourself. And granted, I'll give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. But you might find yourself in a situation that you might need the market to go sideways one or two more days to start trickling down back to the bottom range, what we saw yesterday, or start grinding back up to today's highs. That's going to be the challenge considering everything is in the middle of the range. And that's where it's going to be a big part. Tomorrow, you might find yourself in a situation where churn exists, right? You, tomorrow, you might find yourself in a, in a situation that you're complaining. Two seconds ago, the market was strong. Three seconds later, the market is weak. That's, that's what's called stocks being in the middle of the ranges. So if you understand that information, if you understand that data, the last thing you want to do tomorrow is wake up tomorrow with a three-inch erection, start pounding your chest. Is it Tuesday yet? What's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Wednesday, right? Tomorrow's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday yet? Tomorrow's an opportunity. Social media guys telling me this is going up. Social media guys telling me that's going up. The charts are telling you everything's in between, right? Forget what the social media guy is saying. Forget about your favorite social media celebrity. I'm telling you as the day is long, everything's in the middle of the ranges. So what's going to need to happen is instead of us looking for yesterday's channels to confirm back to the downside or today's channels to confirm back to the upside, we're going to have to use today's ranges as kind of a guide. So obviously, for example, I don't see it. It might happen. Do I think the queues are going to go back to 423 tomorrow? Probably not. Like I said, I think everything needs to go sideways for the next couple of days. But I think there's a very, very good chance that specific stocks that are in the NASDAQ 100 have a really, really good chance of testing yesterday's ranges. Small chance, but that. In a perfect world tomorrow, we get a gap. And again, I'm not talking about we get a gap up to buy stocks. I'm looking for the fact that we got rejected today back in the 65 day. I want to see if we get rejected back at the top of the range and start making lower lows throughout the first half hour, 40 minutes of the day.
Because if some of these stocks can start losing today's ranges, not necessarily to yesterday's, but if certain stocks that didn't rally can start losing today's ranges, then I think there is a shot that if we do confirm today's ranges, we start trickling down slowly but surely. And by kind of towards the end of the week, there's a shot that we test the bottom of the range here. Now, what's going to make this market go up? It's a very, very, very fair question. We really don't have too much, too many catalysts. Uh, I know NVIDIA reports on the 28th, but that's what, three weeks from now? Okay. Um, I, I think you have to use your prudent, you got to put on your prudent hat, your feasibility hat and say to yourself, what could I do? Where is going to be my value? For me, the, my value is channels, right? I trade NASDAQ 100 names, primarily the same 9, 10 names over and over and over again. So I, of course, I know where Tesla's bottom channel is. I know where Tesla's top channel is. I know where NVIDIA's bottom channel is. I know where NVIDIA's uh, top channel is. So it's it's more of a game of chicken for the next day or so. Because we are stuck in the middle of the range, we have to, and I say this all the time in the webinar, we have to let the market kind of do the heavy lifting for us. You kind of go into the trees with the machete and start chopping down trees. Eventually, we'll have a very clear path to the goal line. Eventually, we'll have a very, very clean channel uh, into the end zone. And that's exactly what you want, which is the message that I kind of reiterate pretty much every single day when we are stuck in the middle of the channels, okay? And that is, um, you don't have to trade them today, right? The market is open doesn't mean your process is going to highlight what you want to do, right? Maybe consumer cyclicals are ripping. Maybe oils are ripping. But if you don't trade consumer cyclicals, if you don't trade oil, if you don't trade Bitcoin and crypto uh, and everything else under the sun and your, uh, your lane is technology and everything is stuck, well, guess what? You are out of luck. So the point is we don't trade because the market's open. We trade because we're getting value. How much value are we going to get tomorrow? to be determined. But I do know we are stuck in the middle of the channel and we know either the top channel needs to clean up supply to go higher. And I know the bottom channel needs to clean up uh, demand and go lower. We're right in the middle. So flip a coin and see where it lands. And tomorrow's one of those days. Be prudent, right? Let channels develop. Let the themes develop. Let everything kind of, kind of narrate what's going to happen next. Let the market kind of develop a personality tomorrow. Remember, you don't need to trade 200 different stocks. You got to just catch one. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about some ideas. Um, let's talk about some ideas uh, for tomorrow. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow. Here's a, you know, here's a scenario that we're looking from the top and the bottom of the range. What cleared stock that looks like crap that hasn't died yet? I forgot who gave, it, who gave us the heads up in the webinar. Look at Zoom. Man, this is a multi-month channel that if it breaks, this thing's going to get hit. I don't know when their earnings are. You have to check the earnings date. But guys, how many stop, How many short setups look like this, right? You can see here, it stopped three times in June. It stopped in July. And back-to-back -back days, literally at the same channel. Literally at the same channel. If Zoom starts losing the bottom channel here, this thing is going to get hit. Look at AMD. Right? Look at AMD here. AMD had a big, big sell-off. Ironically, this damn thing was strong yesterday. Again, who had that on their on their bingo card? It put it an inside day. If there is a rally tomorrow, well, let's watch the top of the range here if we can reclaim back the 10-day moving average. If there is a sell-off tomorrow, then I'm definitely watching today's range because if today's range gets confirmed, then hell, who knows? Maybe we go back to uh yesterday's range. Uh look at meta, right? Meta, again, one of the very few names that had you know, strong earnings uh, is sitting above the 50-day moving average where it reclaimed today. Assuming the market rallies tomorrow, guys, look, Meta's got rejected pretty much at the same channel here, back-to-back -back days. If we can finally get back above today's channel for tomorrow, maybe this thing really, really starts going. Again, if anything is going to be strong, it's going to be strong. It's going to be strong with stocks that actually had a really, really good corner instead of eh, it's okay, right? Right? Apple was okay. Microsoft was okay. Meta was actually pretty good. So we got to watch that up as well. Uh, Tesla, right? Tesla is setting up very, very tight here. As you can see here, it is stuck between a supply and demand zone. It's gotten rejected back to back days at the 100 day supply. And today it held, uh, today it held the 50, excuse me, the 65 day, uh, EMA. One of these two channels are going to snap. Either Tesla is going to reclaim back the 100 day and would it go higher and test the 50 day moving average, 
or are we gonna lose back the 65 day moving average and go back to yesterday's lows? So there's definitely things to do, right? There's definitely things to do, but the last thing you wanna do is go out guns blazing tomorrow in the middle of a, a distribution period for the last couple of days and start predicting for yourselves, try to guess where the next move of the market is. There are certain days that are very, very clean. There's certain days that are very, very clear based on data for the next day. Tomorrow is not one of them. Trade according to what the market gives you, not the market that you want. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. And with God's help, I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.